And welcome back, everybody. Aesop Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our Elite Dangerous Chronicle. I'm going to get our timer started. But we can have this be a short episode, or at least on time. I'm going to accept this going to... This is another internal report delivery, and it's taking me to Rich Terminal of the LTT-8190 system. Okay, and there is something that I remembered that I'm going to show you guys. So I have six tons of cargo space. We're at 420,000, I think, credits. Um, if you go to EDDB, I think you can do this on Inara also, but I know how to do it with EDDB. Select single hop route. In other words, you're not making a loop. You're not trading from this station to this station and then this station to this station. We're just we're just saying, hey, I've got a mission that's taking me over here, so what can I buy here that will sell well over here? So you select single hop route, and you're buying from, we are in HR8526, I think. Yeah, Badaran City. We're at, what if I, what if I don't put stations? We are going to... Uh, uh, let's see, I have a reference. LTT8190. LTT8190. Rich terminal. Okay. And we have, I'm going to say, oh no, ah, bummer. E D la 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 E D D B single hop. Okay, you son of a gun. Three hundred one two three three hundred thousand. Cargo capacity is six tons. I think that's all I need to fill out here. Okay, H R eighty five. 26 LTT uh, 8190 find routes now this is for any station within either one of these systems the max profit looks like it's going to be for T pick up from Volk Hub drop off at Korolev plant the second most profitable is going from Volk Hub to Rich Terminal. So let's take this one. It's going to be 6T as well. Okay, so we're going to go to Volk Hub and buy T. X out of that. Get back into here. Did I start my timer? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, go over here. Navigate, Volk Hub. What? System map. There it is. Select that. Exit. Auto launch. Take over. Okay. This is where we're going. We need to get out of mass lock. Okay, now. Is it highlighted? No. Badaran City, Wellman's Julian Depot, Brooks Hub, Salam Keep, Roman Romanenko.
Riley Station. Where in the world is Volk's Hub at? There it is, finally. Good grief. Engage Super Cruise. Super Cruise Assist. There we go. Okay. Alright, so the fast way to do that is to just go into Super Cruise manually and then you'll have it targeted and I can find that. It'll be highlighted in the map. I can find that a lot easier, and then I can engage Super Cruise Assist. We did not... We, we just missed our time limit, guys. Right as I was taking off from the previous station, we busted time limit on that last delivery. So, we got two out of three. I feel decent about that. We're sitting at 420,000 credits. We're about to spend a little bit of that. We'll make 5,000 something credits off of this trade. And um, another 17,000 credits for the drop off of the report. Pending invites, no pending friend requests, history, squadron feed, incoming text channels. Okay. Looking back over here. This is where my brother's at. He's with the Federation. I was looking at the Great Power. This used to be huge. Apparently, they got beat down. Oh, man. What's going on with her? Turmoil. Under threat. T top 25 systems. Deficit contribution. Negative command. Capital balance. Wow. I wonder what happened here. This is the part of, this is a part of the game that I I'm intrigued by but I don't know very much about yet. And my brother's been playing this game for a while but I'm not sure like he how do I put this? He's busy you know, and he plays this game as a way to kind of wind down and just sort of tool around in space and stuff and go kill some bandits and things like that. And he's a part of power play, but um, I'm not sure how much he knows about how the, the intricacies. We haven't really had, we've not been able to talk a whole lot about Eve beyond like, I'm not asking the right questions, you know, when you start out, I, I said Eve, Elite Dangerous, uh, when you start out in this game, there's so much to learn just with the piloting of your ship, and that's kind of what he likes the most. He's always been into flight simulators. He has, um, he has very good spatial awareness, and so he's able to actually pull off complex maneuvers and spiral down into things and move all over the place 
uh, and know where he's at and what he's doing at all times. So he's very good at controlling the aircraft in a simulator. And that's, uh, that's what he's into it for. Well, I'm more into the big picture stuff. I want to know what's going on with power play. How, do, how are the systems expanding? Uh, let me show you something. This is something that I'm not really sure about that I'm trying to learn more about. Uh, let's see, I think it's over in here. If I go into, uh, wrong button. If I go into galaxy map and I come over to power play and then we zoom out, this is what is called the bubble. Uh, this is highly colonized, developed, strongly held sovereign territory of the human race. What, Whatever faction it is, you know, there's different factions within the human race, but this is human territory. The soul system is in here. This is everything that we've done has taken place in this area. But if you zoom out, you know, like I, I know that we're over, we've got, where is it? Barnard. Well, I can't see it now. It's down in here somewhere. We 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 just recently colonized something called the Witchhead Nebula. But look at all of this area. And so, my question is: is that is it up to the players to grow and develop this player space so that we pull all of this under human sovereignty? You know, and the bubble expands. Is is that possible? Oh, here it is, Witchhead Nebula. I know that we have some colonies out here, and the aliens, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're counterattacking out here right now. Well, I want to take part in stuff like that. That That is extremely interesting to me. But I don't know how it all works. I'm not for sure. You know, I mean, obviously... If this game's been around for like five years now... When it comes to Horizons, Elite Dangerous is from like the early 80s, I think. Uh, it's This is a franchise that's been around for a really long time, but this iteration of it has been around, I think, for about five years. If this is as far as we've gotten in five years' time, you know, and you got to figure that this hasn't been part of the game for that whole five years. This was, this is part of development after the release of the game as they add more stuff. And we've got all of this That's a lot. You know, I mean, what if you did an exploration thing where you got all the way out here? That that's the that's kind of like Christopher Columbus crossing the ocean, you know, or Magellan going around the world. That that is some sketchy stuff and you really do need to be an explorer to be going out there and to be able to make it back. Ah, that was an accident. All right. Um, there just seems to be so much to learn that I've not even I've not even really grazed the surface yet. I right now the next thing that is on the list for me to learn, besides just simply re-remembering what what I already have learned uh, and knocking the rust off, is. Uh, how to get all the parts to upgrade, you know, to, to do engineering, to get my parts engineered. I know from talking to my brother that I can go buy it on the market. But what I want to do is I want to get in my SRV and be able to be competent enough in the use of my SRV's radar to find these parts. I want to be able to use the third party programs, Inara and EDDB to locate where these materials are, what planets they're on, the closest planets to where I'm at at the time, go there, land on it with my SRV, and then successfully zero in on a single piece of bromite, for example, or bromine or whatever it's called, that's, you know, 15 kilometers from my landing point. I want to be able to do that kind of stuff. Uh, but but it's, it's all very technical, so the learning curve is steep, but 
but when you get a hold of it, boy, you feel like you kind of feel like you're you don't feel like you're doing it in real life. But I would venture to say that it feels a little bit like you're a NASA astronaut running through simulation exercises for a trip to Mars. You know, that kind of a thing. It, it, it's very... This word gets overused all the time, and I use it a lot too. I overuse it. But I don't have another word to describe it. It's very immersive. It makes the game come alive and the environment feel fully fleshed out and like you have a purpose and a goal that you're aiming for and it's just very very neat especially in the era that we live in when space exploration is once again becoming becoming a major thing uh for for at least for america right now I i'm sure it's got to be other than america you know i mean I talked about it earlier in the episode, but we've got Elon Musk looking at privatizing this. Once it goes privatized, that that's international, you know, and, and just like with the International Space Station, I'm sure it's going to be a global cooperative effort uh, to go out and try and push the boundaries on this thing. From what I understand, that movie, uh, The Martian with Matt Damon in it, um, It was, to the greatest extent possible, based off of things that NASA really is working on right now. Like, legit, right now, today, planning for a, a mission to Mars. Now, we can't get to Mars, nor have we been able to land on Mars and survey it to see if any of this stuff really works. But but as I understand it right now, what's holding us back, the the... The bottle cap on this is that we cannot get to Mars fast enough. It would, our we don't know how to cryo freeze. We don't have hyperspace. You know those kinds of things. Our NASA team would age a lot in the time that it took to travel from Earth to Mars. And I don't even think we we know how to equip a ship with that much fuel. You know, so we have limitations that we cannot, those are hurdles that we cannot get over yet. But with the data that the Hubble Space Telescope has gathered and things of that nature, NASA engineers have been able to analyze the composition of the Mars, the Martian landscape and the Martian atmosphere and use things available here on Earth to engineer the stuff that you see in that movie, The Martian, where the stuff that he made his, uh, shelter out of and how he grew uh, food you know and stuff like that all of that stuff is it's in place it's all theoretical but it's very highly researched theory you know it's a hypothesis it's not just a blind guess uh, so I don't know I'm getting super geeky with it and all that but I, I just I'm not I don't I'm not a big nerd as far as how do I want to put that that sounds so pejorative I Okay. I am um, I am not someone who has a lot of education in this stuff is what I'm trying to say. Where I, I haven't had the classes, I don't have an aptitude where I had high level, you know, AP classes in high school in physics or anything or, or, or on to college where I did super well in scientific courses or anything like that. I don't have any of that. Uh, I just I just think it's cool. It's it's neat. It's interesting. And um, so from more of a populist perspective, a popular point of view, uh, this stuff is really exciting. And it makes playing a game like this a little bit more within the realm of possibility, we'll say. Obviously, this is way off in the distance. But can you imagine space trucking through systems like we have been? And this is like, it's not a thing. Like, you can, it's very doable. I forgot to let this thing take over. <laughs> okay, Commander, proceed to landing pad zero one. Assisted docking initiated. We're gonna buy the T and then we're off to uh, the next system. Six units of T, we got 10 minutes. 
boy, this this game may really need to go to an hour per episode. I don't know. I'm torn. It's a lot of traveling through space, which seems like it would be boring for you guys to watch. I don't know what to do about that right now. Alright. Well, we might as well check their mission board to see if there's anything going to the system that we're moving to. Donate 8 units? I don't think so. And there's nothing there. 33 units of tea. Convey the goods to Orsted Dock in the L119-33 system. We're not going to L119, are we? We are going to LTT-8190. This is paying 351,000 credits. Um, I'm not going to do that. That would require a lot of back and forth. Instead... I'm going to go to the commodities market, buy tea. Uh, oh, I can buy eight. I guess I'll buy eight for 10,120 credits. Cargo capacity eight. Okay. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. Copy that. Let's uh, ah, open Galaxy and plot route. Let me go back to a normal map. And we have the route plotted. Let's auto launch. Waiting in queue. See, I never wait in queue whenever I'm doing this manually. I cut people off constantly. <laughs> and I don't get flagged for it or anything. I think that was a beluga. Hey, is it our turn yet? Green light, green light, green light. Come on. Leave station in 414. Oh, we ain't waiting for this no more. I'll do this myself. That was kind of baloney. <laughs> I'm doing on fuel. Okay, I'm doing fine. I'm not sure how many jumps we are away. not a good system be to be jumping through with stuff in our cargo hold. Station is what we're looking for. Pulse, 
Pulsar. Unexplored uh, system now. Come on, man. Course of plant. Oh, there's a lot here. Rich terminal. Select. Exit. Where's it at? There we go. Okay, can I find you quickly? If there's a hot key for super cruise assist I might have to look into that we got just under four minutes left so we're doing okay hopefully no pirates we're getting pretty close Megameters. Ten. I think we're going to make it. I think we are. Okay. Time bonus. Two minutes left, we might not make that. Auto dock in progress. All right, auto dock, can you land us quick enough for me to make this time bonus? Services, mission board, standby, internal, choose this reward. Nice. Okay. Promotion to dealer. Nice. Advance you to the rank of dealer. Uh, okay. I don't see... I don't know where this mission is. That there, the, There's a one where this chat is. I don't know where it is that they're talking about. So I'm going to exit that, get out of that also, go to start ports, uh, services, go to commodities, sell, T, 6,792 credit profit. 
Okay. There's our timer. Exit. Exit. Four. We are at 448, almost 449,000. Hollow me. Accessories. And dealer. Okay. Save. Confirm. Back. Exit. Hollow me. Ah, get out of there. That is not what I wanted to do. I want to move around. How do I do this? Hold on. I don't want to end this episode yet until I defeat this. <laughs> um, maybe it's... Oh, it's Mouse 2. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Trade is the only thing I've been able to level up in so far. We are a peaceful person. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll do it for there. I'll probably, I think... For the rest of our money making, because I need about a million credits. I want to do that off camera. Um, it just seems like, guys, it just seems like it would be kind of boring, you know? So I'm, I'm going to raise the money that we need off camera, and the next episode that you see will be um, us buying the frame shift drive. Uh, or maybe it was the fuel pump. It was the fuel pump. Uh, that we need the the 3A fuel pump, yeah, for 900,000 credits. Okay, so that'll be a wrap on this episode. Uh, again, I am Aesop Grimm, and thank you for coming by the channel. I'll see you in the next episode where this story continues. Thanks for visiting Aesop Grimm's Chronicles. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. I hope to see you in the next episode, and until then, stay shiny.